عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقائدنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله Today's session will focus on the ninth outer action that draws us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya for another meeting, for the real meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This outer action is commanding good and forbidding evil al amr bil ma'ruf wa an nahyu 'anil munkar al ma'ruf is all that islam has ordained while al munkar is that all that islam has forbidden so enjoining what is good Al Ma'ruf and forbidding what is evil, Al Munkar, is one of the most important uh, Islamic duties. Indeed, it is the noblest and most sublime. This is the task of the prophets, this is the task of the messengers. Peace be upon them all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned this in Surah, in Surah Nisa in Ayah 165. Rusulam so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent messengers. Who are these messengers? What's their uh, duty? Messengers are bearers of good news as well as of warning in order that mankind should have no plea against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the coming of the messengers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent these messengers so that people would not tell, stop and tell him if in, on the day of judgment, you, you forbid this, but we didn't know that. So Allah has made it clear. He sent the messengers to explain to people. Actually, a Muslim uh, should recognize what is good and what is evil by acquiring knowledge and understanding the teachings of Islam, the teaching of this uh, religion. In fact, knowing and, underst and understanding the teaching of Islam constitute a sign of man's happiness and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do good to him. So, what happens? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ So when Allah wishes good for anyone, He bestows upon him the fiqh or the comprehension of the religion. So if someone wants to say, to, to ask people to do good, then he should be able to recognize what is good. And if he wants to tell them not to do uh, an evil action, he also should know that this action is evil. So, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah Al Imran, Ayah 104. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So, let there be 
from you a nation. So what is this nation? يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنْ المنكر. Inviting to inviting people to good in enjoining what is right and forbidding what is evil, what is wrong. So who this nation is? So those will be the successful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates in this ayah that people who possess the, uh, the qualities of calling others uh, to goodness, enjoining good and forbidding evil, are those who are successful. So this is what we need. We need to be successful on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of, of, of this of the successful group. So what is what are what are the characteristics of this group? Allah mentions that in Surah Al Hajj in Ayah 41. He says, الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عقبة الأمور. So those those are if if we give them authority those are the group of people whom if we give authority in the land. So what do they do? They establish prayer. They give zakah, they enjoin what's right, and they forbid what's wrong. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the uh, outcome of matters, of everything. So each and every community should have a group of people who direct people to doing maruf, to doing good. And to be away from munkar, which is evil. So they should clarify what maruf is. They should clarify what munkar is. And this should start, actually, in the smallest unit of the society, which is the family. So the parents are responsible for their children when they are young. They should always direct them. They should always uh, guide them. They should always advise to them. And they should fully play the entrusted role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. So they raise good Muslims. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the narrations, so you are all guardians and you are all responsible for your folks. So, الأمير راع والرجل راع على أهل بيته والمرأة راعية على بيت زوجها وولده so the ruler is a guardian over his people. The man is a guardian of his family. The woman is a guardian and is responsible for, uh, for her husband's house and for their offspring. And so all of you are guardians. And all of you are responsible for your folks. Parents. Parents love their children. They are responsible about them. So they do their best to ensure a good life for them. Good education. Good, uh, good of everything. And this is on the dunya level. But this is not the only goal. Their aim should not focus on dunya only. It should not focus, uh, it should not be just to prepare all goods for their children, 
for this vanishing dunya only. They should help them for the life after, for the day of judgment. They do their best so, so that their children are saved on the next on the next life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased of their children. So they are coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For this, they teach them, they guide them, they teach them what is good, they teach them what is evil. They, they teach them to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They always remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching them. So he is not to see them doing any ma'asiyah or any sins intentionally. So what do they do? What do their parents do? They choose good friends for their children. Uh, they choose good, good company for their children. They, they take them to the gatherings. They put them in gatherings of reciting the Holy Quran, understanding it and memorizing it. So they, they would be half of the Quran. And they do this because they know that when uh, they memorize the Quran, then the Quran will, will, will be protection for them. So they teach them good manners. They advise them how to be good to others and help them when they, when they need help. So this is the role of the uh, perfect uh, parents. They take care of their children, not only physically, but also spiritually. Now listen to Sayyidina Luqman radiallahu anh, gently advising his son. Yes, it was an advice for his son, but it's an important lesson for all of us. Sayyidina Luqman says, and this is Surah Luqman, Ayah 17, يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور. So uh, my son, he is addressing, uh, he is addressing his son, and he's giving him advice. So what is this advice? that establish prayer. So look at the first thing that he is, that he is advising him. Establish prayer. أَقِمِ الصَّلَةِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Enjoin what is, what is right. Enjoin what is good. And forbid what is wrong, forbid what is evil, and be patient over what befalls you. Indeed, this is uh, of the matters determina requiring determination. And of course, there are other advices that he gave him but this is our point enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong so if we raise our children as by the advice mentioned by Sayyidina Luqman then we are sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them he will guide them and he will protect them so they would be, of course, they are of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be proud of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Holy uh, Quran the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the best nation amongst all mankind. So he said, this is Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 110. So you are the best nation 
produced as an example for mankind. So why? What, what, did, what, did, what did they do? تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. You enjoy what's right and you forbid what's wrong and you believe in Allah. So you, the Ummah of Muhammad, is the best of people ever raised up for mankind. So this Ummah is the best of people for the people. The Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is the most righteous amongst all, all nations. And they are the most beneficial nation for mankind. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said about this. I was given what no other prophet before me was given. So the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is that? Oh, Messenger of Allah, what is it? What, what, what is that that you have been given that none of the previous prophets have been given? He said a few things. Nusirtu birrab. I was given victory by fear. وأعطيت مفاتيح الأرض. I was given the keys of the earth. وسميت أحمد. I was called أحمد. وجعل التراب لي طهورة. And the earth was made clean, a clean place for me to perform to him who did and to pray on it. وَجُعِلَتْ أُمَّتِي خَيْرَ الْأُمَمْ And my ummah was made the best ummah. So, the best nation produced for mankind is the nation of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ That we are of this, this ummah. We are of this nation. So, this ummah the 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 best that was produced for mankind the, the, they enjoy what is right and they forbid what is evil and on the day of judgment all people even the prophets would wish that they are of the ummah of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are of this ummah. So do you know why 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 everyone would wish that they are of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because this ummah will enjoy the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah ayah 71 when he said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ so the believing men and the believing women are allies of one another. What do they do? The first thing, they enjoin what is right and they forbid what is evil. They establish the prayer. They give zakah. They obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers. Allah, this, those, Allah will have mercy upon them. To the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the goal. And those who will receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment are saved. Now, <clears throat> enjoining what is good and forbidding what's evil, al amru bil ma'ruf wa nahi al munkar, is is a mission which will never end until this dunya is over. So it will stay forever. It is obligatory upon all the ummah. 
rulers, men, women, and each according to his and or her circumstances. And the Prophet وسلم, clarified that uh, there are three stages of enjoining good and evil and uh, forbidding evil. So he said, Whoever amongst you sees an evil, he must change it with his hand. If he is unable to do so with his hand, then he will do it with his tongue. And if he is unable to do it with his tongue, then he should do it with his heart. And that is the weakest form of faith. So what is the what are these stages? So the first stage, uh, forbidding evil with the hand. Who can do this? Rulers, people in authority are the ones who can do that. They can oblige people uh, to Allah's command and obligations. As we mentioned earlier, uh, a believer plays this role with his wife, with his children, by enjoining them to observe uh, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forbid them to commit uh, prohibitions with, uh, and he can do this with his hands. So we can do that. Especially if talking is not effective. So if if the ruler... Uh, uh, orders something then everyone should obey if someone does not then the ruler can get this person hit him uh, put him in prison so he can do something with his hands so this is uh, just uh, for men who for for people who are in authority emir a judge chief of a tribe anyone appointed by a by by the muslim ruler or his people in the absence of the public uh, rulership anyone can do that but they should have uh, uh, they they can implement this obligation according to their own capacity, but they are the people in authority. So this is the first stage. Now the second stage, which is enjoining good and forbidding evil with one's tongue. He may uh, request... Uh, people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perform salah, pay zakah, stop doing a particular evil or the like. But in this stage, a Muslim uh, is doing this with his tongue. So he um, admonishes, he reminds people and uh, checking the things that they do in case there are any mistakes. So those responsibles in this stage has less power than those of the first stage. This group, the second on the second stage, they cannot use their hands, their authority to uh, um, to order people or uh, to do something or to f f forbid people from doing something. The second stage people, the group, they they do it just with words, just with tongue. Now the third group, this the third stage. Who? What is this stage? They the, those people. This is represented by someone who can do nothing except to mention it in his heart. He sees there is an evil, but he can do nothing. 
He does not have any power. He cannot change anything. So he cannot even talk to others about it. The only thing he can do is by his heart only. He would acknowledge that he is not happy with this with this evil thing that is being uh, done uh, in front of him, but he cannot do anything. He can just uh, uh, do, do the prevention with his heart. He can make dua. He can he can just acknowledge that this is something that he hates. We have to keep in mind something very important that there is a close relationship between today's topic, enjoining good and forbidding evil, and the topic of giving advice. Uh, it is one of the fundamental and best acts of worship that Muslims can exchange advice. But we have always to remember the conditions of giving advice. So, enjoining good and forbidding evil is nothing but giving an advice. But how can we give advice? We have to do it wisely. We have to do it with kindness. Don't be harsh on people. Do it in private. Do not expose people. Keep their sins secret. If you know something about people, about some, someone, do not threaten him that you will expose him to people. No. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man satara musliman, satarahu allahu yawm al qiyamah. Whoever covers up the fault of a Muslim, Allah will cover up his fault on the day of resurrection. So, there are rules for giving advice. The most important one of them, that it should be in private. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover us on the day of judgment. We do not expose people. Then moving on to another point. There is a big punishment on the day of judgment to someone who orders people to be to, to, to be good in this dunya and he does not adhere to good. He does not adhere to goodness. And he orders people to, to be away from evil. And he does all that is evil. Usama bin Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhumma qal Samiyatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Yu'ta bin rajuli yawma al-qiyamati fayulqa fi al-nar فتندلق أقتاب بطنه فيدور بها كما يدور الحمار في الرحى. So Usama bin Zayd رضي الله عنه reported that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala صلى الله عليه وسلم said a man will be brought on the day of resurrection and will be cast into hellfire. His intestines will pour forth and he will go around, around, as a donkey goes around a milestone. فيجتمعوا إليه أهل النار فيقولون يا فلان مالك ألم تك تأمر بالمعروف وتنهى عن المنكر. So the inmates of hell will gather around him, and they will say. What has happened to you, so and so? Were you not enjoining us to do good and forbidding us to do evil? And فَيَقُولُ بَلَى كُنْتُ آمُرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا آتِيهِ وَأَنْهَى عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَآتِيهِ So his reply would be, I was enjoining you to do good 
but was not doing it myself. And I was forbidding you from to do evil, but I was doing it myself. So this is the state of the person who does not practice what he preaches. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. So he will be thrown into hellfire and his evil will be disclosed to all people, to everyone. Allah will unveil him. The people of hell watch him and they wonder, they will wonder how this man, how this man whom they thought that he is righteous in dunya is in hellfire. So him, when he when he would answer them, they would know that he was ordering good, but he did not practice it. And he was forbidding evil, but he was committing it. So similarly, the same thing, the same uh, uh, idea was mentioned in Surah Al-Saf in uh, uh, Ayah 2nd and 3rd, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُ لِمَ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Oh, you who have believed, why do you why do you say what you do not do? Great is 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 hatred in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you say what you do not do. Uh, this is actually about commanding good and forbidding evil. Now, what about the people who command evil and encourage it and forbid good? They discourage people from doing good. In fact, this group of people is also described in the Holy Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 67 and 68, الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْضُ يأمرون بالمنكر وينهون عن المعروف ويقبضون أيديهم نسوا الله فنسيهم إن المنافقين هم الفاسقون. So the hypocrite men and hypocrite women are of one another. They enjoin what is wrong and forbid what is right. And close they close their hands they are stingy they have forgotten allah so allah has forgotten them accordingly and indeed the hypocrites uh, are the definitely disobedient وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ So what is, what is their punishment now? وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْكُفَّارَ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا هِيَ حَسْبُهُمْ وَلَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُقِيمٌ So Allah has promised the hypocrite men and the hypocrite women and the disbelievers. So Allah has promised all of them, all of them the fire hellfire wherein they will abide eternally they will not be able to get out they will not be able the the, the punishment will not be reduced to them but it will increase and, and increase and increase it is sufficient for them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed them and for them is an enduring punishment everlasting punishment so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who truly enjoy 
that which is good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the group who forbid that which is evil. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerity in whatever we do. So we do it and we ask him for sincerity. Ya Allah, make our actions all for your sake. So everything that we do is just for you. So that when you look at us, you would see us of your obedient people, um, of your obedient servants about whom you said, this is our goal in this dunya. We want to be of the winner's group, of those who are successful on the day of judgment. So we want you, Ya Allah, to get us closer to you. And we want to apply all that you ordered us to do. We want us to be away from all that you wanted us to be away from. We want your help. So when we do something good, it's not because we are good. No, it's because that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, has made us do that. It's because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we did what is good. And that we uh, stayed away from what is evil. So we want the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to be of his obedient servants. So to be able to follow his messenger. So to be able to apply the teachings of his messenger. So to be able to apply the teachings of the Quran. We want help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do it ourselves. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us do whatever pleases him. And this is the whole point of this series. We want the actions that would get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to do whatever Allah uh, is pleased with. And we want to be away from whatever Allah hates and is not pleased with. We want to be of this group whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. One time, a young man came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, atazanu li fi zina? So would you allow me to practice fornication? So people uh, talked loudly to him. How can you do that? How can you ask the Prophet for that? So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, leave him, leave him. And he looked at him and he said, come closer. So he came closer to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, asked him, do you like this for your mother? He said, no, no, ya Rasulullah, jahalami Allahu fi that, may I be a ransom for you. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, so, same similar, similar things. People would not like it for their mothers. Then he asked him, do you like it for your, for your daughter? Do you like anybody, anybody do, do, does, does uh, unlawful relation with your daughter? He said, la, la. No, we are Rasulullah. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, Similarly, people do not like it for their, for their uh, uh, daughters. And then he asked him about the aunts. And he said the same thing. So Sayyidina Muhammad 
placed his blessed hand on the heart of that young man. And he said, Allahumma tahir qalba, waghfir dhamba, wahassin farja. Ya Allah, purify his heart. Forgive him. And make him of the people who, who are saved from this. And that man said, لم يكن بعد ذلك شيء أبغض إليه من الزنا. So there was nothing more hatred to that man from this action. So imagine Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, our master, our teacher, look into each and every action that he did. Look at how he dealt with the subject. He did not shout at him. He did not curse him. He did not speak badly to him. But he talked wisely to him. He convinced him that this is something that Allah hates. This is something that nobody likes. And he made dua for him. So to all mothers, I would say, with your responsibility as a mother, as a guardian to your children, you have always to make dua for your children. Do not belittle the power of the mother's dua. It makes miracles. It changes things to the best. So be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him always for guidance, ask him always for help so that we leave this dunya and he is pleased with us. So we want to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we want to be with those who enjoy the companionship of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, to guide us, to protect our children, to provide them with good companions who will advise them when they slip. Allahumma ja'alna mimma yastma'u yastami'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana. Allahumma nalqaaka wa anta radin anna. And so, until... We meet next week, inshallah, with another outer action that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get us more, pre more prepared, more ready to meet him on the day we, we leave this dunya. I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.